We see a storm, we see rain, and we think depression. We think I can't do anything. Instead of thinking grass can't grow without rain, roses don't bloom without rain. Number one, there's one thing I need you to stop saying, and that is I should do something. That perspective, that viewpoint, that ideology, that philosophy, that mindset is going to get you bankrupt. I should start this. I should stop that. I should forgive. I should. You don't get what you should. You get what you must have. I must work out X amount of times a week. I must forgive. I must evolve. I must become. I must retain. I must grow. I must live. I must evolve. I must go to the next level. I must live in this type of house. I must drive this type of car. I don't care how bad you think the shoes are that you are wearing. There is another man in this world who will kill to walk a mile in the pair that you wear. Marcus, what does this mean? This means that what you are complaining about, what you hate, what you can't stand, what you want to walk out of, what you want to give up on, there is somebody out there that would die to be in your position. And so here's what I need you to ask yourself. Is this problem an issue or is it an opportunity? Some of you, all you've been waiting for your whole life was an opportunity. What if losing your job was the opportunity? What if the divorce is an opportunity? What if the bankruptcy is an opportunity? What if the one you love was an opportunity for you to reconnect with somebody and forgive them? Shift your perspective. If you can change your perspective, you can change the future. Many of you listening to me right now, you have unfinished business. And you need to go back to that dream, back to that idea. You have a date with destiny. You have unfinished business. It's time for you to go back to the drawing board with a new perspective. It's your viewpoint. And watch this. Your perspective actually shapes your language. And your language shapes your world. And so if you don't start thinking right, you're not going to talk right. And if you're not talking right, you're not going to experience the world that you see in your head. I don't know who God has called you to become, but what I can tell you is if you keep seeing it the way you have seen it, you will never become it. Everybody wants next level. Everybody wants wealth and influence and everybody wants to be this esoteric novelty. But listen to me, you will never experience any of this showing up in your next season with the same viewpoint. The right perspective makes the impossible possible. I hope you're training your ass off, man. I hope you stay in focus, you know, because everything is on the line for you. To this day, to this day. I am the most baddest man on the planet. Oh, oh my God, man. it was a short shot. You got to believe in yourself. Like I said, if you speak it, believe it, you'll receive it, baby. It's just like that. Your mind is very powerful. You speak it, believe it, receive it. Speak it, believe it, receive it. Speak it, believe it, receive it. And it shall be yours. Why have let me hurt? And the only tease on the affection. If I had to pray to fail, 40 seconds to the fifth one hand. Stay your feet. Let me go. Every last one of them, I have sent them to the hospital. This is no joking around. There's no faking. One time I was wearing the bodysuit. He threw a uh, right hand on the inside. Hit me like right here. I had to have hernia surgery. A lot of protective gear, but the protective gear is made for humans hitting it, not somebody that hits like Deontay. All humans are not created equal. Mm. Some mm. people just have a beautiful hand of cards. Yes. That guy's got four aces and he puts them right in your face. Boom! I said, he went down in sections. Mm. When a guy goes down like that, yeah. that ain't good. That ain't when a guy good. goes down one time, he went down in sections. 
when I look at my situation, look at my career, man, it's always been about me. It's always been about I had to promote myself. I had to get myself out there. I had to keep winning. I got to keep knocking guys out. I'm the profile. I'm the one that had to take less offers and stuff. It's always seemed like I, 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 I was the one that have to do everything. And now in my career, it's, it's, it's me that I'm betting on myself. I'm taking charge of my own career. I know if I bet on myself, I know I can dictate everything. I run everything. I'm the boss. Forward! I am the hardest hitting puncher in boxing history, period. Keep telling people, I'm not going to be in this sport long. Because it's a crazy feeling to have so much power. Consider this your wake-up call. What most people fail to realize is that pain is inevitable and it is unavoidable. There is no path in life without pain. Whatever it is that you're going after, whoever it is that you've been destined to become, you cannot have it. You will not become it without pain. You will face challenges and difficulties and giants, regardless if you are single, if you are married, if you are a stay-at-home mom, a stay-at-home father, if you are an entrepreneur, if you're working a nine-to-five, if you're an educator, if you are an athlete, if you are a musician, a singer, a producer, it doesn't matter who you are, what you are doing, pain is inevitable. If I'm going to hurt like this, if I'm going to bleed like this, if I'm going to cry like this, let me cry because I'm in the best shape of my life. Let me cry because I'm conditioned to weather the uphill war. Let me cry because I'm building my relationship. I'm building my business. I'm building my legacy. Let me cry because it hurt, but there is a reward on the other end of my pain. Let me cry tears because I passed the test, because I gave it everything I had. Choose your heart. Everything in life comes with hardship. Make a decision. At some juncture, you will encounter pain. And the moment that you get acquainted with pain, you get acquainted with hardship. You realize that no matter what you do, no matter how much you study, no matter how much you plan, you will not be able to avoid a measure of pain. I don't care what it is, losing weight. I don't care what it is, uh, a new eating paradigm, a new relationship paradigm, new thoughts, new behaviors. It doesn't matter what you're after, what you're looking to become. If you don't go to the gym, it's going to hurt you. If you go to the gym, it's going to hurt you. Your muscles are going to tear. But on the other side of that pain, there is a reward. There isn't any regrets. You won't regret taking care of your body. On the other side of making those healthy decisions, there is a reward. It's the reward of discipline. It's the reward of longevity. It's the reward of influence. It's the reward of power. Do you want results? Do you want a reward? Or do you want regrets? The decision is yours. It's all hard, so choose your heart. Pain is inevitable and it is unavoidable. Pick your pain. Everybody's got a plan until life knocks them out because we weren't ready for the pain. And when the pain came, we did not process it. Processing pain is a skill set you've got to acquire. It's a type of currency. If you want the future, if you want next level, if you want tomorrow, if you want to manifest, if you want this thing, I don't care what it is, then you're going to have to get acquainted with pain. The pain of discipline, the pain of growth, the pain of learning, the pain of giving, the pain of forgiving. It all hurts. So pick your pain. Choose your heart. Because at some juncture in life, at some corner you're going to turn, you are going to encounter pain. And you've got to process that pain well. Hear me when I say it. Pain is unavoidable. 
It's hard to let go of the past. It's hard to give sometimes of your time, your talent, and your treasure. It's hard to balance work life. It's hard to acquire new skills. It's hard to be stagnant. It's hard to be a workhorse. It's hard to be lazy. It's hard to learn how to manage and cultivate relationships. It's hard to learn from your experiences. It's hard to turn your mess into your message. It's all hard. It's hard to hold on. It's hard to let go. But there's a reward on the other end of many of these hardships. You better choose reward or regret. There is always reward and regret attached to every decision that you make. Hope. Hold on. Pain ends. Pain does have an expiration date. And when that pain ends, another one will surface, but you will be strong enough because you endured the current pain well. Everybody wants resurrection, but nobody wants the pain of dying to themselves. There's a pain that hurts you, and there's a pain that changes you. So today, all I want you to do is make a decision to choose your heart. If you're a freshman and you know a senior in this room, you give them everything in your body today. You break your neck to break their neck. That's how you win big game. You hit them in the mouth. You hit them in the mouth, kings. Every single one of y'all in here are kings. You kings. So when you step on that field again, you don't say, let's go, my nigga. You say, let's go, king. This is our house. I was born a king. I was born to be a winner. I was born to be a champion. The difference between a champion and a loser is a mindset. Once you put your mindset, once you put your mindset where a killer mindset is, ain't nobody gonna stop you. Because I'm gonna tell you now, this game is not for nice people. And y'all know that this game is not for nice people. This game is for young men running around neighborhoods knowing if they don't make a play, if they don't get a scholarship, they gonna die in that neighborhood. They're going to end up with another statistic. See, some people play the game for the Gatorade and the cheerleaders. And some people play the game because they know they got to save their family life. They got to make a way. Their family tree is rotten, so they got to replant one. And what football gives you the ability to do, it gives you the ability to leave the slum, go to one of the nicest colleges in the world, build your own name, build your own legacy, get drafted, and tell your mama and your daddy and your sister, we leaving the hood today. And you know why we leaving? Because I was unselfish. Because I left everything, I left everything on the field. I want you guys to believe, don't just listen to me. Feel me in your soul. Believe you can win. Believe you can win. Because we only get one shot at this team. We didn't come this far to come this far. I'm going to repeat that. We didn't come this far to come this far. We came here to be champions. We came here to be one of the number one schools in the country. We came here to show even people in our own city that's doubting us. That you will be my fan. You will follow me and you will bite your words. Because that head coach you got, all these coaches, all these men around you, that's the blessing. That's who you play for. Because at the end of the day, you guys are going to tell you it's going to go fast. It's going to go fast. One day you're going to be riding down the street, you're going to see your coach, you're going to say, Coach, all the lessons you gave me, I should have listened. It's going to be somebody that say that. I should have listened. But tonight, if you listen to every single word them coaches say, if you be unselfish, if you don't think about yourself, if you don't think about that, all them thousands of fans standing on the outside, put your mind frame on the field. Keep your mind frame on the field. And when you step off that bus, you tighten up your tie and you say, this is my business trip. Are you going to close the deal or are you going to fold? 
When I stepped on the field, I had a, I had a mind frame. My mother was a heroin addict. So when, when I stepped on the field, I thought about, I want to save my mama's life. This man in front of me is going to stop me from saving my mom. It's going to stop me from saving my brothers and my sisters. It's going to stop me from taking my brothers and sisters away from crackheads and drug addicts every day. And when I looked at my opponent across from me, I told him, you not hungry enough. You don't want this enough. My life on the line. You hear me, King? Your life on the line today. Everything on the line. You go out there and you let them hit you in your mouth and beat you, you quit. Them teenage boys just like you teenage boys. They bleed just like you. They go to class just like you. So you gonna let a man stand in front of you and say, I'm more man than you? Or you gonna hit him in the mouth and say, hey boys, we came to fight. I ain't gotta talk to you. I ain't got a bicker to you. I'm gonna hit you in your mouth for 60 minutes. Kings, whatever you do today, you leave every drop of your blood on that field today. And I'm proud of you. We ain't lost a draw. But I want y'all to remember one thing, King. Remember one thing. The best gifts come from the bottom. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Like when you open up that cereal box as a kid, that gift was at the bottom. You had to eat through all that to get that gift at the bottom. And that's your season. That's your season. You had to eat through all that. Coach is cussing you out, trying to get your grades together, arguing in the study hall, arguing with teammates, fighting with teammates. Now, today is the day that you put all that in the package. You put all that in the grenade and you blow Hoover Stadium up tonight. And you let them know that Sparkman football is here for years to come. But the legacy, it starts today. Wide receivers, run every route like your life depends on. Linebackers, break your neck to break their neck. I don't care about injuries. Offensive line, get nasty. Get nasty. If you hit him in the first play of the game, hit him in his mouth. I don't care if it's a straw play. You block him till the whistle is over with. Make him say this dude is extra. Make him say this dude is crazy. If you believe, King, anything is possible. Anything is possible. I'm King Hollis, man. I love y'all. Go out there and become champion. Y'all be blessed. I get it. The pain is unbearable. You keep playing it back in your head. Over and over and over. You keep trying to see where you went wrong. The situation is on repeat. People are going to talk anyway. So you may as well do what makes you happy. And now some people are going to call you a loser. Some people are going to make fun of you for failing. Some people are going to count you out. Say you will never amount to anything. Call you weak. What you gonna do? Are you gonna prove them right? Or are you gonna prove them wrong? Let them think you're weak. Stop going back and forth with people who don't deserve your time or your attention. If you have been announcing your plans, do me a favor. Stop talking and start showing. No need for you to say what you're going to do. Just do it. I learned the hard way that everyone who is around me is not for me because everyone doesn't want the best for me. 
And so I had to learn to keep things to myself until I have already done the work. Are you going to show them that failure doesn't define who you are? Are you going to show them that failure is a necessary lesson on the path to success? Are you going to show them that you're a beast in this game? What you going to do? You got to get hungry. You got to get ready. It's time to get to work and show them all. Show them you're a different animal. Let them talk. When you're on a mission, you don't have time to be fighting meaningless battles. You have to be focused. You have to be intentional. And you can't allow the noise outside to get to you. I get it. You did everything in your power and you still came up short. And you feel like you can't take the pain anymore. You did everything you could and you still failed. You didn't win. But that's okay. It's okay you didn't walk away with the trophy. It's okay that you didn't walk away with your head held high. I get it. It happens. That's life. What do you want to be remembered for? It's time to get to work. So take a moment and take note of who and what you've been giving your energy to. Everything you do should be on purpose and aligned with your life's goals. It's your mindset that will get you to the top, but your mindset can also keep you in a cycle of starting but never finishing. If you're not careful, you will find yourself talking, planning, and analyzing, but never executing. It's time to get back in the game. Pick your head up. Get up! Let them talk. Let them think you're weak. Let them think you'll never succeed. Their thoughts do not define you. That failure doesn't define you. Your work ethic does. Your drive does. Your tenacity does. Your relentlessness does. Winners are action takers. Winners take a hit and get back up. You don't have to know exactly how you're going to get what you want. You just have to have an inner knowing that you're going to do it, that you're going to make it, that you're going to cross the finish line. So stop talking about who you want to become and become that person now. Do you realize that you can step into your future self right now? You don't have to procrastinate. You don't have to wait until you feel like everything is lining up perfectly. Growth is supposed to be uncomfortable. So stop looking for comfort. Stand up. I know it's scary. I know it's intimidating. I know it's hard, but it's time. It's time to level up. It's time to choose to be great. Time to choose to be better. Let's go. It's time to win. I can recall saying time after time, why is everything so hard for me? From the outside looking in, it looked like everyone else was winning with ease. But I was bruised. I was broken. I was burned out. But I had it all wrong. I made my journey difficult because without even realizing it, I expected my journey to be difficult. In fact, when something came easy for me, I was nervous. I was nervous because I was not accustomed to winning so easily. I was accustomed to struggling. I was accustomed to being stressed out. And I'm not saying that you won't hit some difficult moments, but I am saying that you shouldn't commit to having a difficult life. 
You have to condition your mind to expect your situation to get better. And you have to remind yourself that those who are winning are no different from you. Those who win, those who go hard, those who crush their goals have no problem focusing on themselves and what they want. Many of us have been conditioned to put ourselves last. Many of us have been taught that it's our duty to make everyone around us happy. And what happens is you get so wrapped up in trying to make everyone around you happy and comfortable that you end up losing yourself. You end up losing your vision. You lose your drive. You lose your why. And guess what? That is not fair to you. You deserve to set aside time for yourself. You deserve to be able to say no and not feel guilty about it. You deserve to be selfish sometimes. This is the thing. People will sing your praises until you tell them no. Don't lose yourself trying to be who everyone else wants you to be. Don't lose your focus. Don't stop going hard just because people have something to say about it. If you continue to put yourself on the back burner, you will have to deal with the consequences of that decision. Don't keep saying you want something, but then when it's time to go after it, you've got excuse after excuse. If you want it, you have to go after it with all you've got. Your job is to show up Put in the work and let your results speak for you. Less talking, more results. You got to get back to that child. That child that wanted to dream. That wanted to chase everything the world told him that he couldn't have. Yes. We got to reset. We're surrounded by the noise. We're surrounded by the social media, the Instagram, all of these things that give us no fulfillment. And the reason why you feel this way is because you've been surrounded by negativity. You've been surrounded by individuals that call themselves your friend. But in all reality, They're just another energy drainer. They're just another person that wants to tell you that you cannot accomplish your dreams because they failed at every obstacle they ever tried to defeat. Let's go back into that hole. Let's go back into the darkness. Some of the most monumental and transformational Portraits and pictures that we've ever seen were developed in the dark room. I'm talking to that athlete. I'm talking to that administrator. I'm talking to that nurse, that doctor. I'm talking to that student. I'm talking to that communicator. I'm talking to that pioneer, that inventor. I'm talking to that entrepreneur. I'm talking to that preacher. I'm talking to that person who refuses to stay where they are. I'm talking to that person that doesn't have a problem laying in obscurity because you know that when you come out of the dark room, all eyes on you. Rise. From that ghost state, a new man and a new woman on its journey to greatness. Why are you here? What is your destiny? I got a question. What will you do when no one is watching? What will you do 
when no one is listening. That's the only time that we'll be able to bring something to this world that it never seen before. One of the greatest challenges with disappearing is understanding the revelation of building in the dark. The secret of change is to focus all of our energy, not on fighting the old, but building the new and specifically behind closed doors when nobody's looking, when no one is there to affirm you, when nobody's there to validate you, when nobody is there to agree with you, you build in the dark and you announce it when it's finished. Let me tell you, you're going to fight until you can't fight no more. And when you can't fight anymore, you're going to lay down and bleed a while. And then you're going to get up and fight some more. Sometimes you have to fall back into the dark room and focus on you. There are too many people in your life who have left you. There are too many people in your life who have counted you out. There are too many people in your life who have whispered in your ear and said, you'll be worse off without them. Prove them wrong. There are people in your life that claim to be your friends. And honestly, they are just standing there waiting to see you fail. Yeah, you have those friends that come out to support you and tell you how great you are. But when they're driving off, leaving from the event, they're saying to themselves, I can do that better than him. Or I can do that better than her. Disappear and do the work that is required. Sometimes you got to take a break from just about everything. Disappear, come back and shock the world. You've been surrounded by individuals that call themselves your friend. They're just another person that wants to tell you that you cannot accomplish your dreams. Are you worth my time? If you're not, it's time to unplug. Time to unplug. Time to unplug. This is the process when you have to reset. And when you have to ghost everyone. When I was working with my professional athletes, it required me to do a lot of traveling. And this story gets me every time. So when people say it didn't hurt, it still hurts. I was packing for a trip. My daughter walks into the room. She says, Dad, why do you travel so much? I said, sweetheart, this is how I provide for the family. This is how I take care of you and mom. This is how I put food on the table. She looks at me says, Daddy, if I eat less, will you stay home more? Now people would think in a fairy tale, or most people would say, I unpacked my suitcase, I'm not going to take this trip, but let's go grab some ice cream or let's go out. I kept packing. Why? I had to set an example for her early of what it meant to win and what you have to leave behind sometimes in order to pursue what's unique to you. And I wanted her to understand this is who I am. And I want to set an example for you. I had a conversation with her later on to tell her why I did all those things. In the middle of the conversation, she stopped me. She goes, I get it. I understand. She saw the results. She saw how it brought us closer together. She understood my dedication to my craft and what it took to excel and what it took to be different. 
and what it took to stand by unpopular decisions, knowing that every successful person that I've met, every successful person that I know has had to make those decisions over and over again. There are things that are going to have to take a back seat. You're going to have to leave a lot of things behind. The hardest thing with Kobe was getting him to stop. Yeah, okay, take a break, rest. Yes. Take the day off. That was the most challenging thing with him because over all the years that he had his success, it was about go, go, go. And then when I came on, I was the complete icicle. I got to get you to stop. His 3 a.m. workouts, yeah. they're crazy. Crazy. You know, having to keep the Staples Center open later because he wasn't happy the way he performed at that game. And I would not leave till he would leave. Really? Yeah. So we would be we would be in the arena sometimes two, three o'clock in the morning. Shut up. All the lights are turned off except on the court, and we just keep going, we just keep going. What is the mindset of winning? They both had that. So I look at it, I look at it three ways. So you have individuals that compete. You know a lot of people that compete. Yeah. You know, every we all know how to compete. Everybody knows how to how to compete. You don't forget how to compete. We just decide not to anymore. Mm -hmm. But so, a lot of people compete just to finish. Then there's individuals that win, but they only win one time. It's easy to win and then never win again. And then there's people that win at winning. You can't come back the same, cannot come back the same. You have to come back different. You have to come back better. Winning wants you to be different. Winning requires you to do different things. Winning requires you to think in a different way. Winning speaks its own language. Winning has its own way of recognizing you. Winning wants you to write your own story. Stop looking for steps. Those steps are infinite. Find your own path to winning because as the late great Kobe Bryant said winning is everything <laughs>